other newspapers, all with the uh, same thing, complimenting President Obama. It's time for Americans to realize that governing is hard work and that a president can't just wave a magic wand and fix everything from a letter alleged from Eli Light, published in the Philadelphia Inquirer, and then published under the same name in the San Francisco Examiner with a home address of Daly City, California. So this is making the rounds. There was a similar thing in the Bush administration where people were, uh, you know, supporting the war and putting down anyone who was against the war. And uh, this same letter, same author, was published in numerous newspapers across the United States. And I guess the poor slobs who live in any of these communities are just left completely incommunicado. They can't uh, get their opinion out for squat, not that they care about what our opinion is. There's some strange mine wars going on in South Africa. This I just find absolutely uh, bizarre. It's, you know, I don't know, there's large groups of so-called illegal miners. Fighting going on in the mines, people killed. Secret entrances to the mines. Uh, this is just a fantastic story that was in the uh, South African news called Too Terrified to Go Down. But sometimes when we think about what is in the subterranean world, we know there's a lot of things they don't tell us about. What got me started on the story was the uh, unfortunate suicide of a South African reporter. And then I found the same police uh, officer, Captain Leonard Halathi was involved in uh, his suicide death and some of the other crimes he was working on was this miners thing and I just found it surprising that to deal with this suicide that the police organized crime unit was looking after this reporter then of course I also find uh, the murder of a government uh, individual Department of Culture Sport and Recreation just a total mystery somebody breaks into his home without leaving any sign of entry shoots him three times with a stolen police pistol and uh, he fights with the guy, whatever, whatever, and uh, he's, he succumbs to his injuries. And we, we just have to wonder, like, what the hell is going on here? The uh, security company that uh, monitored his place got a panic signal at 4.21 a.m. They estimate that the break-in may have happened uh, at approximately 4 o'clock in the morning. Everything was still locked. When the security response team gets there, they find the guy's physician working on him. Now, that I find hard to believe because, uh, you know, getting a house call is one thing. Getting a house call at 4 o'clock in the morning and having the doctor tend to you uh, within 20 minutes of uh, point of shooting, it's pretty good stuff. So I think I'd be looking at the doctor rather closely unless he was sleeping overnight, but uh, he did have a wife and two children in the residence too. So one of the other bizarre things that comes to happen that really made the story far more important than what most media would give it rank for is when they went to bury him, a high-ranking politician phoned the cemetery, talked to the cemetery director and said, you ain't putting that black ass in that hole. Not necessarily quote unquote. So they had to fill the hole and then start looking for a new place to bury this guy. So the mayor got really upset, phoned this politician who uh, is a, you know, unnamed here. No, no, ordered the manager of community services, Mr. Rashid Matola. Yes, indeed, to continue with the, the funeral and to use the same grave. So you just have to wonder, like, you know, man, did this guy really piss somebody off? Because not only did they shoot him, they wouldn't even bury him. And, uh, you know, to just to openly come up and say we can't put you in this grave that his family paid for in the cemetery is really, really bizarre. So, uh, you know, who's killing who and who's doing what in South Africa is hard to keep in touch on because we're not down there all the time. But we do have some spies down there. Another Toronto story is just a sad one. You know, family faces deportation. We had a major construction accident December 24th, Christmas Eve. Four construction workers were killed working on an apartment building. Some scaffolding collapsed. And one of the poor unfortunate souls who was killed, it turns out uh, his family was seeking refugee status from Israel because they didn't want their kids to serve in the military. Poor seven-year-old girl uh, might get the boot. They're going to have an immigration hearing on the 23rd of February. Just a very, very sad story because this poor little child, seven years old, goes to daddy's grave every day, tells him uh, he, you know, that she loves him and that he's okay and mommy's okay. Just one of those tearjerker stories like, you know, uh, I don't think we could have too much problem uh, making some room for these people. Like if daddy can lose his life trying to uh, fix this country and build this country, uh, I don't see it such a big deal to, uh, to keep his survivors behind. And, uh, you know, we would hope that the Minister of Immigration, if he isn't dodging missiles or pies, is uh, man enough to, uh, or if he even is a man, who knows, if uh, 
they're good enough to just allow this one to slide past. It's probably uh, well off. We got a big victory in the courts with raw milk. That's a big issue still in the United States, but a Justice of the Peace said uh, the people that were involved in this milk co-op are all co-owners of the cow and therefore allowed to uh, consume the raw milk. You know, what a horrible thing that milk is, uh, you know, another weapon of mass destruction that our government has to keep from us. Terrible, uh, terrible, terrible, isn't it? Vancouver police go, uh, you know, mayhem here and, uh, you know, beat the living crap out of some guy. It's a domestic dispute late at night, 2 a.m. They go to the wrong door, knock on the door. Don't even identify themselves as police. Don't say that they're conducting an investigation in something. Don't even ask if he's the party that they are supposed to be dealing with. They just grab this guy and start beating the living crap out of him, busting his, uh, you know, eye socket bone and swelling him up like a melon. Maybe it's only because he was Chinese, but, uh, you know, he just happened to own the house and he rented out another part of the house, so frequently a lot of homes are like that. You'd figure a great detective with the Vancouver Police Department, in fact, two great detectives with the Vancouver Police Department, might be able to figure that out. Or maybe they just didn't like his name, Yahweh, which kind of sounds like God in the old language. Yahweh Wu is the victim in this, and I hope he sues us their ass off. But the other big thing is, why are these people working in law enforcement. If you are a violent, racist bigot, totally, un it's just like you go into the doctor's office, oh, hi, doc, you know, I got this pain. The guy grabs you, throws you on the table, pulls out a scalpel, and starts excising your organs. Well, isn't that like kind of getting it out of line, doc? Like, you know, you're supposed to have a license and be a professional. Uh, you knock on the door, police, you know, we're here for a complaint. Guy opens the door, what's your name, sir? We're here for a complaint. And he tells you his name. You go, oh, gee, that's not the name we're supposed to look for. Do you know Mr. So-and-so? Yeah, he's my tenant. He lives next door. Ah, uh, and you got to go to police college to learn how to do this. And then you get promoted to be a detective. And you go to police college again to take, you know, specialty courses. Is it hard? We can find thugs from Africa to beat people up for probably 10 cents an hour. Some people probably do it for fun. We see the UN is abandoning the climate change deadline. Yippee. Even their own people are starting to smell a rat. Iran is sending the fifth fleet to the Gulf of Aden. It's just a rotation, so there's not a big deal there. Justices reject the corporate spending limits, so now we can buy politicians. Far. Like, if we had them on the stock market, that decision would mean something. You know what I mean? Like you could invest in your senator or your congressman like stock, and the fact that they uh, rejected the campaign spending limits means the value of that guy that you know somebody owns and has in his back pocket could go through the roof, and you could probably turn around the whole economy. They probably never thought about that. Put these idiots on the stock market because now we can bet on them. Is the drug companies going to go for this guy or is it going to be big oil? What about the banksters? Maybe they want to put some money into congressmen so or so, and we can bet on whether or not their value is going to go up as a tool of the big corporations. Or maybe someone just comes out of the blue like just your average everyday billionaire you meet down at the store, and everything will change. We see the great laws they have in England and the police state going after a woman for having noisy sex. Like they were going to put her in jail for this, and when she does it again. They are going to put her in jail. So she gets 12 uh, months suspended sentence and a 12-month supervision order. Like, you know, I thought it was our own great Prime Minister Trudeau that says the state has no business in your bedroom. What are they going to put, like a charm bracelet on her to monitor the decibel levels or something like that? It's just unbelievable what these people in England have allowed themselves to get into because they didn't understand the basics of how their country got there. Your country got there because people had to fight the king's armies, right? You were a commoner. Your job was to lick the dirt, pal, okay? When you got married, the lord of the manor gets to screw your wife first. That's the way it used to be. And there was nothing you could say about it except get stabbed or hung or beaten. Was good days, eh? Well, now you're going to go back and see what it's like for a while until you find some cojones to uh, turn this monkey around.
As soon as you hear a politician say safe, terror, or anything of those buzzwords, you know the guy's a living traitor who's trying to completely destroy your nation and put you back into subserviency to the elite rich that generation after generation after generation had to fight and resist until they put King Charles's head in the basket. Two points. Then you got some parliaments and stuff like that.